Good evening and welcome to Forecast from Flagstaff. My name is Chad Eikoff and I serve as Director of Admissions here at NIU. I'm joined by my colleague. Annika Olson and I serve as the Vice President for Enrollment Management here at Northern Arizona University. Tonight we're broadcasting live from the beautiful Native American Cultural Center right in the heart of campus. NAU is committed to serving our Native American students, Alaska Native and Native Hawaiian. Uh, we've made a commitment to strive to be the top uh, institution in the country serving those populations. Um, at last count, I believe we were 115 different tribes represented here on campus. And this is such a gorgeous facility. I said this last episode when we were up in Old Maine, but this also is one of my favorite places to come and meet with colleagues on campus, hang out with students, or just sit by the fire, which we don't have going tonight because it's a little warm outside. Tonight, we have a great episode and a very special guest joining us. Our new president, Jose Luis Cruz Rivera, is here. We're going to ask him some of your questions submitted ahead of time. I added a few of my own as well. So he's gonna be joining us in just a few short minutes. As always, we have time set aside towards the end to answer your questions. But also in the chat tonight from the enrollment team are Jenny, Jessica, and Danny, ready to answer any questions as well. A number of the questions that came in ahead of time were really focused around COVID. And I wanted to just address those straight off tonight at the top of the episode. Last week, Governor Ducey here in the state of Arizona signed an executive order that allowed further guidance to our university and how we're planning to manage COVID on campus this fall. As you know, we are really excited to welcome our students back to our main campus in Flagstaff and our locations throughout this state. In doing so, we will not be mandating vaccinations for students, faculty, or staff. We certainly will continue to encourage all students, faculty, and staff to get the COVID vaccine in your community, at your own pharmacy. I know our grocery store pharmacies are offering them. It's, it's readily accessible. So to maximize your own safety, we certainly are encouraging that. And when we surveyed faculty and staff towards the end of the spring semester to kind of get a gauge on how we were doing, um, how many um, folks got vaccinated, it was over 90% were in the process of the vaccination, meaning they had received one shot, or were already fully vaccinated. And that was very optimistic for us as we were looking ahead to an in-person campus experience this fall, which again, as I said, we're really excited about. A couple other questions came in regarding housing. When you check in for housing and when you're preparing for your move-in, we will not be requiring a negative PCR COVID test any longer. Um, and so keep that in mind. Along with the executive order were guidelines on masks. So we've lifted, Chad and I are maskless, I think for the second episode, we're excited about that. So outside, and we're still um, thinking about guidelines in terms of large group gatherings and, and whatnot. Bottom line is we are gonna be communicating with you regularly throughout the summer. So students, that's your reminder, check your NAU email. Lots of critical information in terms of class scheduling, um, your Louis account information, as well as critical communications as we get closer to that fall opening. Super excited about that. So let me check my notes to make sure I answered all of those COVID questions. I think I covered them all. Um, but of course, it would not be a forecast from Flagstaff without Chad giving us the forecast. So starting to cool off a little bit after what's been a really warm stretch uh, for Flagstaff. 
Um, I, I will say um, we are hoping for rain, and there are some chances of rain as we look ahead in the forecast. It is fire season in Arizona, and there are a number of fires throughout the state of Arizona, and, and crews are managing those, and, and we certainly hope that they get some rain uh, to give some relief there. But I, I do want to also just take a second to say thank you for all the firefighters, um, to the firefighters, and all the personnel that are working um, those fires and helping keep our communities safe. So. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Uh, we, we really appreciate the work that you're doing. Without further ado, though, we definitely want to be jumping into the, the main segment here and our, our special guest that we have tonight, um, the 17th president of NAU. Um, and to kick us off, let's take a look at a video of his uh, start here at NAU. Yate, buenas tardes and good afternoon. Today marks the beginning of the 17th presidency of Northern Arizona University. And I feel so privileged to stand here before you in the celebrated Native American Cultural Center at Northern Arizona University's Magical Mountain Campus in the majestic city of Flagstaff, Arizona. Approximately six months ago, I began the journey that brought me here today. During my campus visit, I pledged to hit the ground learning by investing time in listening to you and those you represent. Today, nearly four months after making that pledge, I am pleased to report that I have learned much and look forward to learning more as together we build on the fabulous legacy of Northern Arizona University. You reminded me of how important and transformative this university has been and will continue to be for the many communities we serve through our statewide campus network and our accessible online presence. I want to remind you that your voice matters to me and that I will continue to invite and value your ideas and suggestions. And I am so excited to be starting our 17th presidency. Today, I am proud to officially call myself a lumberjack. Go Jacks! Well, welcome back and welcome President Cruz Rivera. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for spending some time with us. On day eight uh, of your tenure here, and I know I, I speak for many of my colleagues across campus, we're really excited um, that you chose NAU. A number of our students and families tuning in tonight, or maybe catching the episode later on, recently also chose NAU yes. to start their college career. Can you share a little bit about why you chose to be president? Well, that's, that's a great uh, question. First of all, it's a privilege and an honor that I was selected to be president. Um, I was really interested uh, for this opportunity given the legacy that this institution has in terms of expanding opportunity to students, families, and communities over 120 years of excellence. I was also attracted um, by the fact that our faculty and our staff are so committed to student success. It is really something that you can uh, feel when you are in a room with our faculty and staff, how much pride they take in advancing the lives and the careers of the students that we serve. And finally, I got to be honest, the location is just a magnificent, majestic place. Yep, you can't, you can't really beat Flagstaff. Um, I, I love it too. So there's been a lot of conversation nationally over the last handful of years on is a higher education degree worth it? Is, is it important? Can you share with us your thoughts on why you have chosen to commit your career to higher education and why you think it's important? That is such a great question. Um, the fact of the matter is that higher ed does bring value, not only to the individuals that are able to um, pursue a degree and what it means for their individual uh, life trajectories in terms of career, but also to the communities in which they serve. And so the reason why I have dedicated my life to higher ed is because I have seen what it has done for me and now I've seen the multi-generational power that it has in the fact that my kids have opportunities that perhaps were not available as readily to those in my generation. And we see that um, every day uh, our communities get stronger our values are enacted, and we get closer to those ideals that uh, we have as a nation uh, to make sure that everybody has an opportunity to fulfill their full potential. Great. 
So I know so many faculty and staff have been anticipating your arrival and are excited, and a number of our students as well. What are you most excited about in, the in your presidency? Um, well, I'm really excited about the fall. The fact that we will uh, be able to, uh, for the first time in over 18 months, have a full campus. Um, it's just really exciting to me to see the vibrancy and the vitality of a campus community um, that uh, really values uh, the work that is being done, not only in the classrooms, but also in the field, in the laboratories. And I should say that it's not just about Flagstaff coming alive uh, with our students, but also the many uh, statewide locations uh, that we have the privilege to uh, host students in. Definitely. Um, I had the opportunity to visit a number of the statewide campuses um, just before COVID, and it's just such exciting, vibra vibrant places um, for so many of our students throughout the state and inconvenient uh, for them as well. Um, one of the things you mentioned the last 18 months has been really challenging for so many students. And looking ahead, what do you think is the biggest challenge students are facing in reaching their educational goals? You know, I think uh, there are many possible responses we could give to that question. Um, they are clearly at the national level, uh, challenges around uh, finances, around um, academic preparation, et cetera. But I think the real challenge that students today face in NAU or elsewhere in higher ed across the country is confidence. And I would uh, hope that our students, continuing and prospective students watching today and their parents, realize that all of the challenges that students will face, we are here to support you in facing them. And so it's really about engagement. And so um, I would say that as long as our students know that uh, they should not feel afraid to ask for support in whatever aspect of their academic career they are facing challenges in, I think they will be successful and we will hope that we have that opportunity to help them. Yes, as we always like to say, the best students ask for help before they need it. That's um, right. And we are here to assist in, in any way that's needed. And I know there's a number of parents watching too. Um, if you have a question, reach out. We have an Office of Parent and Family Services, um, the team in enrollment, and our broader student affairs team too are, are ready and willing to assist in any way possible. So when we elect a president as a country, we often talk about the first 100 days, when that, that being kind of the critical jumping off point. So when you look at your first 100 days, and I'll even give you maybe the first six months, okay. what, what do you hope to learn about campus? So I've been so fortunate, um, as you know, Annika, that uh, for the past six months, I have basically been engaged with campus in one way or another. Um, really listening to our students, our faculty and staff to get a sense of their aspirations. So what I hope to accomplish in the first 100 days or six months is to articulate back to our campus communities what I have heard and how we can organize our work and align our efforts to make sure that we get closer to meeting those aspirations sooner rather than later. So I very much look forward to this continued dialogue um, and then putting some action behind um, the things that we profess to be important to us. Great. So last question before we take a short break. And you mentioned your kids going yes. off um, to college. And I'm getting ready to send my oldest Congratulations. off. Congratulations, yeah. Thank you. Um, a little nervous, lots of mixed emotions. And I know we have a number of parents joining us um, on the forecast, as we, as we always do. What conversations did you have with your kids before you sent them off to college? It's a great question. Um, you know, it was really 18 years worth of conversations, right? Um, and that is one of the benefits that being uh, first generation provides to parents, um, then being able to guide uh, their, their kids through the process. But I would say that right before they went off to college, um, I talked to them about returning my texts, right? Keeping in touch. Yep. Um, and as I said earlier, um, I encourage them to not be afraid to ask for help. Um, because having been involved for so many years in higher education, um, I know that it's not only about what the students bring to the table, it's also about what the institution does to help them achieve their goals. And so I really encourage them to, to ask for help. And the last thing I, I really encourage my, my children to do when they went to college was to live the moment. We're always caught up in trying to see what's next. 
And that freshman year in particular is so important for so many reasons. And I hope that our students will really take the time to live the present. Great. Well, thank you for that on behalf of the parents listening and myself too. So we're gonna take a short break. Last episode, we started highlighting some favorite places of our ambassadors throughout campus. And so we're gonna take a look at our lab building and our South Fields. Let's take a look. Hi, my name is Abby. We are currently standing at one of my favorite buildings, the Science and Health Building. I absolutely love the architecture in here. The stairwells are super fun. It's really fun to go all the way to the top and then look down right to the first floor. I also love that we have our SIs in here. Those are students who have exceeded in the past that work with current students in the classes and they do group work, group activities so that students can understand it and have different ways of learning their content. Hi, I'm Cameron and I'm at the South Recreational Fields here on the south end of NAU's campus. Here you can find a lot of different activities ranging from the lacrosse team practicing or intramural sports. I've spent a lot of time here playing intramural soccer matches with my friends or just coming down here on the weekends and kicking a ball around, throwing a frisbee, throwing a football, whatever it may be. It's a really cool place to come and decompress after a long week of school and be able to just get active, get outdoors and enjoy some time with your friends. All right, welcome back. Busy Southfield's gonna be busy in another couple months as well. I know a number of our student athletes are out there throughout the summer as well. I've been known to throw the Frisbee out there with my kids too. So if you're in Flagstaff and, and wanna get out and get a little exercise, Southfield's is our great location to do that. So we're back with our 17th president, uh, Dr. Cruz Rivera. So. I know one thing that came in, and I've had a couple of the students that I work with ask, how are you going to stay connected with students in your very busy role as president? I think um, by very intentionally uh, making uh, the time uh, to not only participate uh, in meetings with our student leaders, organizations and clubs um, and events, uh, but also to uh, make sure that uh, students feel that I am accessible to them. Um, in order to ensure uh, at the same time that they get the resources they need uh, to be successful. So we are very much a student-centered institution. That's what we have been doing for 120 years, and I intend to keep that tradition up uh, through my actions. Great. So if you had a time machine, mm -hmm. what advice would you give your freshman self? My freshman self, um, I would say keep working hard, it will work out, it's gonna be a great journey, and make sure you ask for help when you need it. Awesome, yes, ask for help. We're ask here help. to help. We love to help students. It's why so many of us are here working on a college campus. So I find that um, leaders and colleagues and many students that I've worked with over the years are just a great, a great source of advice for me um, in, in how I, I work with others. What is the best piece of advice that you've ever been given? The best piece of advice I've, I've ever had, it's very simple, is if you're going to do something, do it well. And so I always think about that uh, when pursuing a new adventure, a new project, a new initiative. If we're going to embark down this road, let's make sure that we give it our 110% because if it is important enough to do, it's really important to do it well. Agreed, that's a great piece of advice. So I know in a recent email to the campus community, you shared that since moving to Flagstaff, you had learned how to use a wood stove. Yes. <laughs> so what else has living in Flagstaff, what else have you learned about Flagstaff or the Southwest? Well, um, more generally, I think I've learned how to breathe. I've been for the last 18 months living uh, mostly in New York City, and um, just being here in this magnificent uh, landscape um, and having the ability to breathe uh, has been um, illuminating. Um, I think I've also learned to really appreciate the, the, the beauty in, in, um, in our natural environment, um, just uh, everyday things that uh, normally would go for, for granted or be taken for granted um, is something that I've really learned to do, and that's something I've learned from the people of the Southwest who really uh, live uh, the place. And um, so very much um, looking forward to uh, getting to explore 
uh, Flagstaff, uh, Coconino County, the Grand Canyon, Sedona, uh, in more uh, detail so that I can uh, learn about the place that we inhabit and, and serve it well. Excellent. Okay, last question before yes. we check out some more favorite places on campus. And I got a little sneak peek to this yesterday, I think. Can you share your guiding principles for, for leading and leading our institution? I think uh, institutions are best um, led through consultation by making sure that uh, we can surface uh, the aspirations of the campus community in this case, um, that we can uh, put some actions behind it, and that we can prioritize our efforts based on the talent and the excellence or aspirations to excellence that our campus community has. So it's really a lot about listening. It's a lot about uh, making sure that um, you are supporting the people that are doing the work and being thought partners with them. Uh, so that's pretty much how I approach leadership and why for the last six months I've really just been listening and learning about this great place so that we can put those uh, lessons into action. Great. Well, don't worry. President Cruz Rivera is joining us for our last question segment. We're going to bring Chad back. But first, let's take a look at a couple more favorite places on campus. Hi everyone, my name is Stace and I'm a music education major here at NAU and this is why Kit Recital Hall is one of my favorite places on campus. I had the honor of performing here for my junior recital and it was one of the most renowned and wonderful experiences of my degree. Along with being in Kit Recital Hall, the acoustics and sound are amazing. You can project so well and you can hear the same as in the back as you can in the front. But another reason why Kit Recital Hall is one of my favorite places is because I've seen so many performances in here, whether it is my flute professor, Dr. Emily Hoppe, or guest artists that we had come and perform for us, some being from around the world, whether it is South America or Europe. And it's just another way for us to see how world music differs from country to country. Hello, my name is Abby and I'm a True Blue Ambassador here at NAU and one of the reasons why I like the Pedway here at NAU is that it actually has a lot of greenery and grass and flowers that it's really pretty to look at. I also really like it because it extends the entirety of campus and allows for bikers like myself to travel throughout campus safely um, just for the bikers and for people walking. Welcome back. Absolutely love that segment of favorite places on campus. It's making me fall in love with campus um, all over again. And, um, that Pedway, it's green as could be this time of year. I love it when the fall leaves are changing, um, and even when the snow's on the ground, it's a beautiful place to, to go up and down um, right through the heart of campus, and certainly looking forward to performances at, at Kit Definitely. Recital Hall here. Um, so I'm going to go through uh, some of the questions that were submitted ahead of time in the survey, and we certainly appreciate that. It helps us prepare. Um, I also was keeping an eye on the chat as well. Um, thanks for our team that was in there answering some of the questions, but we're going to pull some of those out and answer them to the group um, as well. Um, the first one that kind of came in on the survey, and there's a few people that asked different variations of this, and I, I think it was um, probably from some of our continuing students. Um, we had um, kind of flexible delivery mm -hmm. last year because of the pandemic, and Annika, I'm going to throw this sure. uh, your way around academic delivery yeah. and, and what that'll look like for fall. Great question. So for our Flagstaff students, we'll be back in person with our academic delivery. So um, kind of pre-pandemic look and feel of academic delivery um, of our student support systems as well as campus activities. So very excited. At our statewide sites, you'll experience the same. A number of those statewide sites are fully opening, um, have, have been open already or opening in the next couple weeks um, with faculty and staff back. So we too, our teams on those campuses are excited um, as well to welcome students back to campus. And then certainly for our online students, they'll, they'll be online. Those are our traditional online programs. 
Um, so our, our, our kind of three different delivery modes will kind of be, will be back to pre-pandemic time. So we're really excited about that. Along with that, um, I know a number of our student success programs were virtual in the last 18 months or so. And I think there'll still be some virtual options to be, uh, for convenience for students. But those two are our, our supplemental instructors, our peer mentoring, and so many of those um, support programs that we talked about, Reach Out, We're Here to Help, will be back as well. Um, and in the first day of classes is Monday, August 23rd. So if that's not already circled on your calendar, make note of that. Yes, yeah, saw that coming in the chat. So August 23rd, make sure, make sure you've got that down. Uh, ahead of time, we had several ask about um, if the rec center will be open. A uh, quick answer to that is yes, and actually it already is open. Yes, so our, our students that are here for summer school, staff that are around town and, and utilize the facilities, um, it, it, it is up and going. So that is certainly going to be available uh, this fall for our students, which I know uh, many are looking forward to. So uh, also kind of on that line of student activities and sports, Annika, I'll throw this your way. What's, what's going to be on tap for this fall? Yes, the amazing TV team who's directing and producing us uh, for all of these forecast sh shows. We were just talking about sports here in, in the fall. And yes, the student athletes and our athletic director, Mike Marlowe, um, we are gearing up for those sports, um, those NCAA sports, as well as intramurals and our club sports as well. Um, our lumberjack experience, which is kind of our welcome back to campus, will be not only for new students, but also continuing students as well. We know a number of you second year students didn't have the opportunity to participate in all those activities last year, so certainly we invite you to participate there. Um, Joey Ruiz, my colleague and the director of The Leap um, programs here on campus in student affairs. He was on our previous episode talking about a number of those programs. So if you didn't check out that episode, you can go back and check it out um, from two weeks ago, too. Great. So it sounds like a vibrant campus experience yeah. and certainly looking forward to that. Um, and I'm going to throw this one to, to President Cruz Rivera. And it came in in the survey. And then actually Barbara and Frank in the chat, both of you also asked this same question. Um, I don't know if you also submitted in the survey, but we'll be sure to get to it here. Um, Annika touched on it a little bit, um, but that idea around sophomores that maybe didn't have the, the typical first year experience that we'd normally offer, um, what, what do we have on tap for them? Um, the short answer is that we will uh, do our best to make up for lost time. Um, as Annika mentioned, uh, the various programs that we are um, always uh, providing to all of our students, especially our freshmen, uh, we will work to make sure that the benefits of those programs are made available to our sophomores who have braved uh, a very diff difficult and different uh, freshman experience, and uh, we owe it to them, to all of you, uh, to make up for some lost time. Absolutely. We know our, a lot of our first year students coming in certainly had a, a tough senior year of high school as well. So we're, we're excited to offer you up a, a great experience um, as well. There was a, a few questions that came in in the survey ahead of time that I kind of lumped together in the campus safety mm -hmm. Realm. Annika, can you just speak broadly about campus safety? Sure, and kind of beyond COVID campus safety, yes. I think the questions were geared towards. So yes, um, we have a, a full police department that um, their jurisdiction is our Flagstaff campus, and that is led by an amazing um, woman, um, Chief Missy Freshour, um, long-term colleague, and, and just really, um, excited to connect with students on campus as her whole force is. In addition, we have campus safety aids that can help throughout campus. The bottom line is, if you are ever feeling unsure or unsafe on this campus, we absolutely want to know about it. So if you see something, say something. Um, there's hundreds of blue light phones where you can report that, um, your resident assistants in the halls and other hall staff, your hall director, or 
any of the offices throughout our campus in, in those buildings. We are here to um, help you, and part of helping you is ensuring that you feel safe on our campus. Um, I know um, a number of our student ambassadors often get, um, do you feel safe on this campus? And, and they always um, say that they do feel quite safe, and that if they ever um, don't feel safe, they're, they're calling or reaching out to someone. So um, certainly I'm not a student any longer, but that's kind of echoing what they typically say in their sentiment. So if you see something that's questionable, we would like to address it. And so whether that's through the Dean of Students office or through um, your residence hall on campus or your academic advisor, faculty members, we're, we are here to make sure you feel safe. Thank you. So a question that came in in the chat was kind of touching on that um, a lot of social issues, issues around diversity at the forefront of our, our conversations nationally um, and probably with peers as well too. Um, and I'm gonna throw this uh, to you, uh, President Cruz Rivera, just kind of this, how does education, how does NAU assist with uh, that piece? That's a great question and I'm very uh, excited uh, about the fact that we will be uh, rolling out a new NAU strategic diversity action plan uh, this uh, fall semester. Um, it will be informed by work that has been happening on campus over the last couple of years, um, and we will make sure that inside the classroom, outside the classroom, in our communities, that we're living um, our value of ensuring that there's equitable access to policies and practices that will ensure that our students, regardless of their background, um, can meet their full potential. Great, thank you. Uh, Annika, wondering um, how, do, how does NAU help students graduate on time? And yes. I, I don't know if a parent asked this or a student asked this, um, but yeah, how, well, what are some ways? it's mind for me as I'm sending off Absolutely. my first like, four years, that's what you get. Um, so a couple different key resources. We've talked about supplemental instruction. So for you parents specifically, most of our academic programs are 120 credit hours to graduation. Now there's a few engineering programs that are a, a little higher than that, um, but most of them are 120 credit hours. If you take that, divide it by four, that's 30 and then 15 hours per semester. So your student and students Staying on track means 15 credit hours per semester. Now, sometimes that might mean 14 in the fall and 16 in the spring, but that's key for graduating on time as well as staying on track with your financial aid, which, you know, well over 90% of our students receive. So that's also really very key. There are a couple programs that we partner with that we do extend those scholarships to the fifth year for another degree or a dual degree in some of our global programs. And, but but those, that, that's kind of a special circumstance. So 120 credit hours, average 15 per semester to stay on track to graduation. A great way to ensure that's happening is to meet regularly with your academic advisor. We have an amazing team led by Terry Hayes that oversees the advising throughout campus. Um, some of those advisors in your first year will be housed in our Gateway Student Success Center. When you come to campus, you, they have open hours. You can walk in, you can schedule in advance. Um, all of those things for you first year students. And then you will meet with an academic advisor as you move along in your academic career in your individual college um, as you get really nuanced in some of those, those course offerings, depending on what your goals are. So we want to make sure you're successful. That is why we are here. Um, and part of that is staying on track in terms of credit hours. I, need to add I, I love middle? love the recommendation of 15 per term. Mm -hmm. Also, want to say if you maybe fall behind there, summer winter yes. term as well. Yes, um, are great options for students to be able to catch back up and, and be on pace to finish in four. So um, that'd be another recommendation I'd throw Excellent. out there. Excellent. Thanks, John. 
So going to throw this your way, uh, Pre President Cruz Rivera. Um, and it, it was a question, a couple people asked this ahead of time um, in the survey, just kind of around uh, student employment on campus, student wages. Is that something that you as an incoming president and your team would be looking at, um, how that all works? Most definitely. We will uh, make sure that as we set the foundation for the presidency itself, that uh, we take uh, stock uh, regarding uh, equitable practices around uh, s student salaries, um, as well as obviously our faculty and staff. So that will be something that we will be looking to do early on this year. Awesome. And I always recommend if you're a, a student and looking to, to work while you're in school, which is, is a great option for, for many students, an on-campus job can be a great option because they understand you're a student first. Um, and they're going to be more flexible with you in terms of uh, your schedule. Maybe it's finals week or you've got a big assignment coming up. Um, they'd be willing to work uh, with you. I would also say if you're looking for an on-campus job, um, continuing students, you may be more familiar with this. Uh, incoming students, this may be new. Handshake is the name of the tool that we have for applying for on-campus jobs. So um, that's where you could look. And you can start looking this summer before you get on campus. Um, we're also going to have some opportunities for some part-time job fairs. Uh, virtually to be able to connect um, with departments on campus. And part of that lumberjack experience, I think, is going to be job fair and connecting with career services, too. But it's right. never too early. A number of departments do have fall jobs posted on Handshake, so you can get a jump start. Absolutely. Uh, uh, this is the last question I'm going to hit here. It came in in the survey ahead of time around if a student needs a printer. So I, I like these t very tactical uh, questions. And um, it's definitely not a requirement. It's a, it's a luxury, not a need. There are opportunities uh, to be able to print around campus, um, so certainly can utilize those. I'll also say, and I think a parent asked this uh, the, because they said when I was in college, yeah. <laughs> um, they, they, they spell it out that way. Um, it, digitally, a lot, a lot of these are submitted digitally now, so a lot of times there's not even a need to print. Um, you can digitally submit it uh, to, to your assignment. But again, resources on campus to print. Um, more of a luxury than a need, but if you have one, um, yeah, it could be nice, but maybe your roommate will just ask to print all the time, so yeah. <laughs> not, not a need, but always uh, really appreciate you taking the time to join us and answer the questions, and uh, President Cruz Rivera, thank you so much for your time and, you. and connecting. You. I've enjoyed getting to know you um, over the few times we've met so far, and looking forward to your presidency uh, here at NAU, um, and we're looking forward to an awesome fall semester for all of you joining, continuing students, new students, parents sending stu uh, their students off to college. We are just so excited uh, to have you joining us here on campus this fall. And until then, go Jacks. Go Jacks. Go Jacks.